In this video series, we're going to be taking a look at how we're going to apply all of those different techniques of solving first order differential equations. So we're going to be taking a look at basically three or four different types of applications. The first of which, the most simplistic, is growth decay modeling. So um, let's say that we have some sort of proportional growth or decay um, that's that's modeled by some sort of constant of proportionality. We can use this differential equation, dx dt is equal to kx, um, where x is going to be the specific population at a time t. Um, and notice that we can solve this both using a separable and a linear method. Of course, we want to use separable whenever possible since it's a little bit easier to do so. So I'm going to illustrate two examples of how to go through and apply this. One of the most um, basic types of problems is just trying to figure out a population at time t given some sort of initial value. So we have a population of a town and it grows at a rate that is proportional to the population. The initial population of 500 increases by 15% in 10 years will be the population in 30 years, All right, Base if it follows that model. So the first thing that we'd like to do is let's set up the differential equation and then we could set up the initial values and other values. Since we're dealing with population, I'm going to say that the rate of change of the population with respect to t, so change in population divided by change in time or the rate, is equal to kp. We know that the initial population is 500, so the population at time 0 is going to be equal to 500. We also know that in 10 years, whatever that population was grew by 15%. So P at 10 is going to be equal to 500 times 1.15. And so that's 115%, since it increased by 15%. Right? And if you throw that into your calculator, um, that should be 575. So that's the first approach that we're going to look for. Now, what we're really looking for is we're looking for the population at 30. That's the ultimate question. And so let's go ahead and solve the differential. And we can clearly see that this is going to be a separable differential. So we're going to say by dividing by P on both sides and multiplying by DT, we get this differential that's separated. Now, remember, K is a constant of proportionality. We know that dp over p, if we were to integrate both sides, is the natural log of the absolute value of p, and I'll just keep it as p for right now, is going to be equal to the constant of proportionality k times t plus some constant of integration c. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve this for p, and obviously p is going to be equal to e to the kt plus c. And remember that trick that we can use, we can rewrite this. p is going to be equal to, remember, e to the c power is just going to be some sort of variable. Usually we call it k. I'm going to call it p sub naught, e to the kt. And the reason I call it p sub naught is that's the initial population. All right. Now we know p0 is going to be equal to 500. And how do we know that? Well, remember this value, p of 0, is equal to 500. And if we substitute that in, 500 is equal to p sub naught e to the k times 0. e to the k times 0 is 1. So that implies that 500 is equal to p sub naught. So we can substitute that right away, is that our population at time t is going to be equal to 500 e to the kt. Now we also remember that we had this value, p at 10 is equal to 575. So we could say that 575 is going to be equal to 500 e to the k times 10. If we go through and evaluate and solve for k, we could divide by 500, so 575 divided by 500 is equal to e to the k times 10. 
Um, if we divide that out and just simplify it, 575 over 500 is 23 twentieths. We could take the natural log of both sides, so ln of 23 twentieths is equal to 10k, and then we could divide by 10. So k is going to be 1 tenth the natural log of 23 twentieths. Um, now, if we were to approximate that, which is probably going to be what we should do, um, let me go ahead and throw that in my calculator really quickly. That ends up being 0 0.01398. And now what we can do is we could just substitute that in. So our function at time t is going to be equal to the initial population 500 e to the point 13013, excuse me, 0.01398t. All right, so that's our function. Now, we're asking what is the population after 30 years? So we're just going to plug in 30 for t. 398 times 30. And we're just going to plug that into our calculator. So 500 e to the 0.01398 times 30. And I end up with 760.5. Since we can't have 0.5 people, we always round down when we're dealing with people, animals, armchairs, whatever it might be. So the population based on this trend is approximately going to be 760 people. A second example. So we have ancient drawings found in France. A piece of burned wood was found in the cave, um, and 85.5% of that C14 had decayed. It's important to know that the, the approximate half-life of C14 is about 5,600 years. Uh, now, in this problem, it doesn't tell us how much C14 we actually started with. Um, but it does want us to know, it does want us to figure out how old is the wood. All right, so let's just assume this. Okay, so here's our differential. Let's say the change in the amount over time is going to be equal to some k times a. Um, we also know that the amount at time zero, let's just call that a sub naught because we have no idea what it is. We know that a at 5600, after 5600 years, we have half of the initial amount. So that's the half-life. Um, and so what we're looking for is we're looking for the time t, okay, we don't know that, to where we're left with not 85.5%, but that's how much had decayed, so 100% minus 85.5. And that would be 14.5%. So we're looking for the time when we have about 0.145 of that initial amount. All right, and that's when we're that's approximately how old are the drawings in the cave approximately. All right. So now that we have all this information, we don't know what a zero is. Okay, we don't need to know it. We're going to solve the differential, and that's just dA over a. It's going to be equal to k dt. Just like we saw before, we're going to integrate both sides. And we're going to end up with the natural log of the absolute value of the amount, okay, which doesn't really matter because it's always going to be positive anyway, is going to be equal to um, kt plus the constant of integration c. We're going to raise both sides to the e, just like we did before. And let's ignore the absolute value. So the amount, a of t, is going to be equal to e to the kt plus c. And we're going to use that trick, a at time t. Remember, e to the c is just a constant. In this case, it's just going to be a naught. Right? And think about what happens if you plug in 0 for t. That just gives you a naught. All right, so that just makes sense at this point. Now we know the half-life 
is 5,600 years. Right? So what we're saying is that when T is 5,600, the amount is half of A0. So by plugging in that initial value, one half of A sub naught is going to be equal to A sub naught E to the 5,600 K or k times 5600, it doesn't matter. Clearly, a sub naught, divide both sides. We're gonna take the natural log of one half to get rid of the e, and that's gonna be equal to 5600 k, and then we're gonna divide by 5600, so ln of a half over 5600 is the exact value for k. Right? Now, we're gonna throw that into our calculator, and we're gonna get an approximation it's going to be a small number because we're dividing by 5600, which makes sense. Um, and I wind up with negative 0 0.000124. Now that's the rate of decay, and it's negative because obviously we want less of the amount when we raise e to a negative power, e, it starts getting smaller. So our amount at time t is going to be equal to whatever that initial amount is, which we don't know, e to the negative point zero 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 one two four t. And now we're trying to solve for the value of t where we're only left with point one four five a naught. So now we're going to say point one four five a sub naught is going to be equal to a sub naught e to the minus point oh 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 one two four t. Obviously a naughts cancel out. We take the natural log of both sides and that's going to be equal to negative point oh 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 one two four t. We divide both sides by negative point oh 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 one two four. So ln of point one four five divided by negative point oh 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 one two four is equal to t, which is going to be approximately, if we throw this in our calculator one last time, um, about fifteen thousand five hundred seventy two point seven five years. So fifteen thousand five hundred seventy two. 0.75 years. And of course we want to make sure that the answer makes sense. Well, remember that a half-life is 5600 years. 0.145 is pretty close to three half-lives because a half-life there's 50% left and then 25% and then 12.5%. So Three half-lives would be 5,600 times three, um, which would work out to be, um, I think, 16,800. And so since 0.145 is pretty close to 0.125, these two should be pretty close to one another. So that's how I reason, at least in my head, that my answer is logical. All right, and that's what I urge you all to do. Make sure that your answer makes sense. Don't just give an answer. Make sure that you can find some sort of way to ensure that that solution is viable. So that takes care of the population growth and decay. In the next examples, we're going to be taking a look at Kirchhoff's law, um, Newton's law of cooling, and then rates of flow um, for fluid.